Hey, it's Mac. How y'all doing? I want to talk about Soul Frame. There's a Soul Frame gameplay demo last weekend during Tenocon. Um, last week was busy. There was Tenocon. There was Evo. In any case, I missed both. But a few days later, I started to see videos pop up on YouTube about Soul Frame and how people were getting a little bit negative about the game. The game's not even out yet. It's not out for who knows when. But I know an open beta is planned in a few months. And the game itself has only been in development for maybe two to two and a half years. That's about all I know. I also know, that that's a lie, I know one more thing. It's from the makers of Warframe, uh, Digital Extremes. Soul Frame is their next big project. Instead of going uh, sci-fi, uh, which Warframe is, they're going more the fantasy route this time, Swords and Sorcery. Um, supposedly has nothing to do with being uh, Dark Souls-like, Souls-like. It's trying to be its own thing. It's going to be a persistent MMO, MMO light type of experience. And I've seen this game before. They showed some uh, gameplay stuff last year, and it looked pretty impressive. I dig the art design. I like the overall vibe they're going for. And the combat that they showed in the uh, gameplay demo last year looked not bad. Like, it looked fairly fun and engaging. It uh, was trying to maybe strike a balance between this mo more slow and deliberate Souls-like combat that we're all so used to now and perhaps something a little bit more uh, fast-paced or like more akin to like a character action game somewhat maybe or maybe like a Zelda style game they're trying to do their own thing and uh, the the latest gameplay demo they did at Tenocon last weekend uh, people seem to have uh, more negative impressions like it was probably the most negative I've heard people talk about this upcoming game and I want to look you know view the video myself, to look at this gameplay video from Tenocon and uh, judge for myself. So yeah, here we go. I'm not going to watch uh, the whole uh, video. I think the whole video is maybe like 18 minutes long. Not going to go through, not gonna go through the whole thing, but I just want to at least go through the beginning setup and uh, watch and talk through the uh, first few combat segments. So let's look and rewind here and then uh, yeah, here we go. Remember, little minnow. That night of old. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm loving the music. And this fly through. Not by nogs. Looking pretty cool. But hard. The narration is also very evocative and really sets the tone. Some kind of war happening. Let's find the battlefield here. Ooh! Those are not traditional catapult projectiles. Not by sense. But so Okay, I'm just gonna stop here for a sec. So, uh, the visual design, the aesthetics, 
the look they're going for is very cool. Uh, the uh, mother here looks a little strange. I guess we're not used to seeing like a new mother in her just like nursery attire with a baby uh, in her home in this sort of setting. It's, it's not something you see very often in games, at least I haven't. She, the proportion wise, she looks a little off. Like it's kind of that exaggerated anatomy almost that this game seems to be going for. Perhaps, just judging from like this, this lady right here, like her neck seems really long. Something looks a little bit off with her. And I wonder if that's gonna extend to like the, the overall like design of all the other uh, characters in the game. The character creation, this is obviously character creation. It's definitely uh, ripping a page from Fallout 4's playbook, isn't it? Where they're showing your parent and it's your, you're customizing the look of your parent. And that's going to determine how your player character is going to look. So overall, I mean, it's, it's pretty, so far so good. No, no major red flags for me. And it's all, it's all good. I'll continue. <laughs> You have to say locks, not hair. A downy cloud blown across the skies. Like night lock feathers over her eyes. Gaze. <laughs> of honey made of spotted dough. Last love she saw was you. I like how they're not content to just use the typical words to describe something. Like instead of saying eyes, they say gaze, instead of saying hair, they say locks. a sneak peek at War Song Prologue. Uh, as I mentioned, it's the intro quest, and what you saw there is how you create the first customization template of your character. The There'll be more template. for that to come, so you can customize further. So um, we're cut. jumping a bit now to, to see uh, the rest of the customization a bit of a showcase process. on how you can get the next ancestor. Fair enough. I love how there's all these uh, <laughs> forest creatures just napping with your character at the start. It's, it's so... It's almost Disney-esque. Classic Disney. The Nightfold. So uh, what's really cool if you're in Preludes is you can go here anytime. It's kind of like having your orbiter at uh, the snap of a finger. So you can go orbiter. in here, Warfing you can references. talk to your ancestors, work on your meta, cue crafting, look at the lore you just unlocked, change your weapons. As long as there's no aggro enemies in the vicinity, at any time you can go into the Nightfold. And as you collect your ancestors, it's kind of like building a village uh, within this kind of purgatory plane. Yes, yeah, you can rock over to the you So I guess sure the while you're in here, if, uh, if a random enemy just, just the wanders by, you'll get pulled out of this so that you can engage with the enemy, I assume. Nothing you worse than being in, in sort of like an inventory that we've been working on as well. or some kind of menu system and you're still being pummeled um, by which is pretty cool, I an think, unseen a lot enemy. Of, uh, traditional instrumentation used and suits their personalities. Same with the voices, custom voices and all of that. So I'm probably going to skip past this part in a sec. Uh, I just want to say that this dream hub area is really cool. Uh, it's, it's very cool that you can just sort of, <laughs> your character just kind of folds back into like a trance or something and they come out the other end into this hub area where you can just customize your weapons, customize your loadouts, I'm sure, upgrade weapons, buy things, uh, choose your cosmetic appearances, all, all this sort of stuff, right? 
and um it gives it lends the entire game like this dreamlike quality which is really cool i that's that's one thing that really stands out to me it's very fairy tale ish like a very dark fairy tale style mixed with like simply just being in like this dream world and none of games i think give off this sort of atmosphere and i think this 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 is the one thing that really makes this game stand apart for me if you take away all the systems all the gameplay stuff i mean if i were to just be able to play this i supposedly this game is going to be free to play so 100 percent, i'm gonna give this game a fair shake download it play it just simply for the atmosphere um, so I'm actually going to skip forward now to the stuff I really want to comment on and get a look at was the combat. So maybe I can just, yeah, there's some customization stuff. He's going to come back into the, uh, game world right about here, right? Preludes. There we go. Let me see some combat, finally. Just, just a disclosure, this is not the first time me watching this video. I've seen people's reactions to it, and it's basically Force Force Gaming's channel is what clued me into people's discontent with with the video and people's concern about the game based on the combat they see in this video. So well, I'm gonna see for myself now. Again, try to dissect why people are worried. So we, we got some stealth happening here. Invisibility spell. Took out two guys at one speed. Of a, a time block. People in the audience are happy about this. Um, okay, I just want to stop here and just rewind this encounter. Now, the part people seem to have the most problem with goes all the way back to the first backstab. <laughs> yes, kind of I want to pause it. When Okay, so, collision issues. There is clearly a, a, a space between where the guy should have the blade embedded in his back and where the blade actually is and the position at the back. And then, yeah, just like the uh, re overall reaction the animation of him actually stabbing and the pulling out the blade it seems a little odd a little jank everything else though you got damage numbers of course <laughs> i liked how uh, after doing the perfect block the character doesn't just stab the guy in the torso he stabs the guy in the knee or something and then he goes to the uh killing blow So, okay, so to me, so far, this gameplay doesn't look too far off from the previous gameplay gameplay video I saw uh, last year. Now, the I could probably link it in the description of the video, but the earlier video showed a warrior-type character wandering through the open world, and then he, instead of using, like, a short sword and shield, I think they just had, like, a long sword. And um, one of the most memorable, memorable things about that gameplay video was that uh, on occasion the guy would just throw his sword out to kill an enemy and then the sword would just kind of like uh, uh, respawn back in the guy's hand or kind of fly back like a boomerang or something. That was really cool. Uh, this appears to be like a different character archetype that they're using, probably a more sneaky dexterity based stealth based character but um yeah it seems to be the big issue here is the way the uh, the backstab looked and the uh animation let's, let's go back and look at some of the animations actually 
people in the audience are happy. They're at Terracon. They're having a good time. There's no reason to be like negative, I guess, when you're attending a, a sort of event in person. You probably paid money. You bought plane tickets. Bought, bought the hotel room. So you're, you're kind of inclined to be in the mood, not be overly critical, right? Be a negative Nancy. As opposed to people just viewing this on the internet. The roll, the roll and recovery from the roll looked a little awkward. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing that really is... Maybe... Oh, are my standards too low? I'm going to rewind just a little bit more. Watch this last bit one more time. Yeah. Yeah, it's faster and more, faster and more fluid than a Souls. Like you're engaging more enemies than you typically would in a Souls game. And it doesn't like it would have like the crushing difficulty or punishment of Souls combat. At the same time, it's not crazy fast like the old style God of War games or, or Ninja Gaiden, right? It's somewhere in between for sure. The world looks nice. The world looks really nice. In terms of level detail, it's pretty good. Like, at this stage, they've worked on this game for a couple of years, and it's all looking pretty damn good. Uh, yeah, I guess this, this is a boss fight that people also complained about. Or just, I don't, I shouldn't say complain. They just felt was a little bit off. The abundance of, uh, Flares and bright lights. <laughs> it's a bit like a disco, maybe. Okay, so he's gone into stealth mode, so his enemy has lost the tracking on the player right now. But now the enemy has essentially escaped. So it's like a multi phase, be like a multi phase encounter. Did I just see a bonfire back then? Um, so I definitely want to keep watching until we, uh, until this this guy meets up with uh, the Nimrod boss again to continue the battle. But I was saying um, just just a bit earlier that the the game world looks really nice. They're not going for ultra realism here. It's not like it's not like they've ins installed a high res. 4K texture Skyrim mod to try and simulate every blade of grass and every leaf that falls off the tree. More stylized for sure. But the level of detail is still very nice. You can see a lot of detail on the grass already. Rocks, things like that. The, the light effects are a little overbearing. But this is stuff that can be tuned. I'm not too worried about <laughs> this being in the final product. Oh. Oh. You got, you got destroyed there. The, the death animation looked a little uh, unfinished. He just ends up crawling on all fours and kind of rotate <laughs> very unrealistically on an axis sort of thing. Um, it's incomplete death animation appears. So it seems like I'm not quite sure what that whole thing is. After you die, you turn into a bird or you're you have a, a bird that carries your spirit back to your body and it seems like you have to find your body uh, within a certain amount of time or else some, um, you know, some consequences. I'm not, I'm not sure what. Anyway. There is um, that light, a trail of light, similar okay. to what you would find in Elden Ring. Kind of telling you where to go. That's kind of nice. But holy shit, like, the music and, like, even the ambient sound effects, like, it's... 
coming together really well. And if the world is going to be this gigantic landmass to explore, which I assume it has to be, because they're competing with the likes of Elden Ring. Elden Ring is primarily a single-player game. It's a huge world, and this is supposed to be a, a more... I don't, I don't know if I should call it massively multiplayer, but it is going to be an online multiplayer game. Um, I don't know if they're going to have mounts or anything. But if they have mounts, then it's almost like guaranteed the world will be huge. Tons to explore. And what they have already is really impressive. You sneak. Okay. I would have smelt your aura from here, were my sights not drowned in brine. She's affecting, I guess, like I am a French the accent. Verminia. Enchanté. Enchanté. May you grant us <laughs> some color and learn some taste besides. Let's go back to some combat. Let's fast forward to some combat. Okay, so Nimrod again. Okay, maybe I will end up watching the whole video, huh? That's right. It's fast forwarding en enough. It's round two, right? Get some, get some payback. Oh, he uh, froze them entirely. Wait, that looked that looked weird. Yeah, there's definitely some animation polish that still needs to be done. Hard to say at this point if the combat has an impact to it. Oh, killed him. You did it. Remember I vanquish? Here's your XP. Seems like a lot of XP. Back to the uh, Dream World hub. So, dream hub. I think Joe's going to go introduce you guys to Verminia and her station, uh, where she will. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here, or begin wrapping up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do. I do know. I think there's a case of people judging the game too early. Uh, I'm going to be completely honest here. Uh, and I don't fault people for being a bit worried for the game. Uh, this is TennoCon. This is their big annual convention. And they chose to show this demo to uh, the uh, convention attendees, their fans, and the people around the world. They're trying to put their best foot for forward. And in, you know, in this demo, there's still a bunch of flaws. Clearly, the game, I mean, the game's unfinished. The game still hasn't come out in a beta. I think there's a closed beta by invitation that people have been playing. Uh, perhaps if you're a content creator or if you're some kind of insider, like in the media. But for the rest of us, we won't be able to play this for another few months. That's plenty of time for them to do a little nip and tuck, refine some of the uh, animations, uh, tone down some of the visual effects and the lighting effects. Core gameplay-wise, I don't know how much of the the stuff we've seen and how the gameplay looks, how much can they change. I I think there's still a fair bit they could do if if they're going to take a lot of this feedback from people seriously. Like, there's a bit of floatiness to the combat. The jump looks weird. The jump animations, uh, the backstab animations, the impact of the backstabs, the how it all looks the pace of the combat, how all that stuff can still be affected and, and kind of like, not just tuned, but fundamentally changed and improved. Um, it's not too late, in my opinion. But until I get my hands on it, I don't know how much they should do, you know? I mean, to me, it just looks pretty good so far. Obviously unfinished, obviously unpolished. 
there's nothing that makes me want to hit the big red button, the big red panic button on my desk. I don't have a panic button, but my hypothetical panic button. There's nothing there yet that makes me want to smash that button and say, call it all off, or like, you know, all hands on deck, we have an emergency here, we have to rethink this whole thing, we got to overhaul the combat system from the ground. It's not, it's, I'm not thinking along those lines at all. Uh, this looks really good already in terms of what they put together, and I know that they're built, they're building this game off of the same engine as Warframe, which itself is isn't it Warframe built on like Unreal 4 or something? Like a heavily modified version of Unreal 4? Something like that. This could be like an Unreal 5, 5 uh, uh, game for all I know. Um, but in terms of just like the art assets they put together, the world design, the music production, like even the care they've put into the dialogue and the exposition, like the narration in the beginning, like it's, it's lyrical. Like it's actually quality stuff in my opinion they put a lot of love and care into the games already so i'm looking forward to playing the open beta whenever it's coming out maybe this fall and i am probably going to be dedicating a fair amount of content on my channel to covering soul frame assuming it's not going to turn out to be a big giant turd which i seriously doubt it will uh based on the um the pedigree of uh, the, the the studio behind this. Um, so yeah, that's that's just my my honest reaction to uh, the Tenocon 2024 gameplay demo of Soul Frame Prelude. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, what do you guys think of the uh, the gameplay video that they showed here? Uh, are you worried at all, or do you, do you think it uh, you think it spells? Do you think it's a bad omen for the for the final product, or are you in a in a wait and see uh, sort of state like I am? Uh, please let me know what you, what you think in the comments below. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to support me in in making more of this type of content. And yeah, the sun's out. Let's have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.